I have a message that I feel like it's God's assignment for us today, and it's just perfect that often God makes me live my messages. Today I'm living my message. The title is, Everything is Going to Be All Right. Everything is going to be all right. And there's a great story in the Bible that will be our main text. Let me read it to you from the book of 2 Kings chapter 4. The child grew and happened one day. He went out to meet his father in the field with the reapers. He said to his father, my head, my head. So he said to the servant, carry him to his mother. The little boy goes out to his father. We think maybe he had a heat stroke or some other kind of calamity. When he was taken from him and brought to his mother, he sat on her knees till noon. Then the child, the boy died. And she went up and laid his, her son on the bed of the man of God. Elijah used to spend time in her house. And so they went to Elijah's house and Elijah's room and laid the boy in that bed. And they shut the door behind him and called for him. Then she called for her husband and said, please let me send one of the young men, one of the donkeys, that they may run to the man of God and come back. And the husband said, why are you going to him today? It's neither new moon nor Sabbath. And she said, it is well. In the Hebrew that reads, it will be well. Or a vernacular that we could say is, everything is going to be all right. She saddled a donkey and said to her servant, drive and go forward. Do not slacken the pace for me unless I tell you. She departed and went to the man of God at Mount Carmel. So it was when the man of God saw her from afar, he said to his servant, Gehe, say, look, the Shumanite woman is coming. Please run to her now and say, is it well with you? Is it well with your husband? Is it well with the child? And she answered, Gehazi, it is well or everything is going to be all right. Then she came to the man of God on the hill. She caught him by his feet. But Gehazi came near to her to push her away. But the man of God said, let her alone. For her soul is deeply distressed, and the Lord's hidden her trouble from me. He's not told me. And she said, did I ask a son of my Lord? Did I not say, do not deceive me? That goes back to the origin of her miracle child. She was barren. Elijah gave her a prophecy that in one year she'd have a baby. She had a miracle son by the prophetic promise of God. Then he had said to Gehazi, go ready yourself and take my staff in your hand. Be on your way. If you meet anyone, don't greet them. Social distancing. If anyone greets you, don't answer them back, but lay my staff on the face of the child. So race toward the house that they were all heading toward. Go ahead of us. Put my staff, the anointed instrument of my authority and leadership, on the child. But the mother of the child said, as the Lord lives and as your soul lives, I won't leave you. So he arose and followed her. So she wouldn't just accept Gehazi going for Elijah. She made a demand that he go. Gehazi went ahead of them and laid the staff on the face of the child, but there was neither voice nor hearing. Therefore, he went back to meet them and said, the child is not awakened or the child is still dead. Elijah came to the house, and there was the child lying dead on his bed. He went in, therefore, shut the door behind the two of them, and prayed to the Lord. What a beautiful portrait of prayer. Shutting the door. Jesus said, go into your closet. It wasn't talking about your clothes closet. He was talking about closing your eyes and having an inner privacy with God, an intimate moment with God. And Elijah went up and lay on the child and put his mouth on the child's mouth, his eyes in the child's eyes, his hands on the child's hands, and stretched himself on the child. And the flesh of the child became warm. He returned back, walking back and forth in the house. And again he went up. The child was not all the way healed. Stretched himself on the child, and then the child sneezed seven times. And the child opened his eyes. The Gehazi said... He called Gehazi and said, call the Shumanite woman, call her. She came to him, and he said, pick up your son. She went in, fell on her feet, bowed to the ground. Then she picked up her son and went out. Father, thank you for your word. 
Thank you for the anointing of your Holy Spirit. How wondrously dependent we are on the magnificent person of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, anoint your servant, anoint your word, anoint all those that will ever listen to this message. Speak to their hearts today. Let them know that everything is going to be all right. In this amazing story, we have the heartbreak, the wrenching heartbreak of a mother losing her only child, her only son. He dies by an accident, dies by some kind of calamity of life, either by heat stroke or disease or some other um, anomaly in his body. And right away, what she does between the time of her problem and the time of her miracle is an example for us what we do. So her husband could tell that something was wrong with her, and he said, why are you heading to the prophet? It's not the normal time. He doesn't pass this way. This isn't a, 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 a time of the feast. This isn't a time of the monthly cycle of worship. Why are you going to him? And, and she said, it is well, or everything is going to be all right. She carried herself from her problem to her miracle by the power of her words, by the hope that kept coming out of rushing out of her mouth. So for us as believers, our words either take us towards our miracle or take us away from our miracle. What we say in the day of discouragement, in the day of problems and troubles, determines what's going to happen in our journey. And so I just want to encourage you in this season, God can't bless something till you stop cursing it. In your own life, bless your family, bless your health, bless your financial future. Yes, there's uncertainty, like this woman who faced real life pain and uncertainty, but yet she kept saying, everything is going to be all right. Hope carries us and connects us to our breakthrough. Hope carries us and connects us to our breakthrough. Your voice determines how this chapter of your story will end. Your own voice. We collaborate with God in writing the ending of the chapters we're in. Proverbs says it like this, death and life are in the power of the tongue. Death and life, death and life. Think about that blessing, cursing. And so, like this woman who had something horrible happen, but she refused to accept it as permanent, I just want to say the sentence to you. I want you to get it. In the kingdom of God, we have kingdom authority to take back anything the enemy has tried to take away. And so whatever the enemy is trying to take away, your business, your finance, your health, your peace of mind, any other kind of problem that's happening in the world right now, that it looks like the enemy or life or problems or what's happening in the culture is taking it away, you have authority in Jesus by the word of God as a citizen of the kingdom of God to take back anything the enemy's trying to take away. Take it back. Well, how do we take it back? It all begins with what we say. It begins with our words. It begins with our confession. It begins by us collaborating with the Holy Spirit. It begins by us forming a bridge between our today and our tomorrow by what we say. She said in the face of hopeless circumstances, everything's going to be all right. I just want to say over you, everything's going to be all right. You may say, oh, Pastor, it doesn't look all right. I know it doesn't look all right, but God's not done writing this ending to your story. Give God the chance to write a good ending. Don't give up. Don't give up. Don't give up. So by force... By tremendous discipline, by extravagant faith, by perseverance, by undying hope, she said, everything is going to be all right. Can you just say those words with me? Everything is going to be all right. Everything is going to be all right. Talk to yourself. Talk to your family. 
When your kids ask you, mom and dad, what are we going to do? What's happening? Instead of voicing what is obvious, instead of voicing what is circumstantial, instead of voicing the problems that are apparent and powerful, just look in their eyes and say, honey, everything's going to be all right. When someone calls you and they're having anxiety and fearfulness and they're asking you for any kind of counsel, support, or, and, 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 and instead of just agreeing with their pain, love them and listen to them. Show them compassion, but then, my friend, start speaking into their life and tell them everything is going to be all right. It was important in this woman's story that she not share with someone who couldn't help her the issues that she was believing God for. Her husband couldn't heal her son. Gehazi couldn't heal her son. She brought to God, to God's servant, and through him to God. She brought right direct to God her issue. He said, I'm not leaving till you come. I'm not letting go. And this boy was literally raised from the dead. Not just because there was a prophet, not just because he was anointed. What really raised this boy from the dead was the faith of his mother. What really raised him from the dead was the unwavering words of a woman who was fighting brokenness, who was fighting discouragement, who was fighting all the things that would be a normal part of a mother, a mother's heart looking at a child. But she pushed past her emotions and kept prophesying, everything's going to be all right. Come on, say it again. Everything is going to be all right. Everything's going to be all right. Yes, people say, well, Pastor, that doesn't seem realistic. You're not, you're not being, you, you know, you, you, you have unrealistic hope. Of course I do. I belong to a kingdom that is flooded with supernatural hope. I belong to a kingdom where my God can do anything, where the impossible is possible. There's a great verse in Micah chapter 7, and it says this, Rejoice not against me. You, my enemy, when I fall, I will arise. When I sit in darkness, the Lord will be a light to me. You have to say in the moments, even on the way down, I'm coming back. He said, when I fall, I will arise. When I fall, I will arise. In Job chapter 22, there's a great verse. And it says this, you will declare a thing. Speaking it. Verse 28 of Job chapter 22. You will declare a thing and it will be established for you. So light will shine in your ways. When they cast you down, you will say, exaltation will come. Then he will save the humble person. When they cast you down, here's the picture. On your way down, you're shouting, I'll be right back. On your way down, you say, the Lord will lift me up. On your way down, you say, I'm getting everything that that I've lost back. On your way down, you say, everything is going to be all right. Say with me again, everything is going to be all right. I don't know how. I don't know when. But I do know God's going to make it good in your story. I don't know how. I don't know when. I just know God is going to. To make it good. The voice of hope stands up in the middle of the storm and boldly declares, we're going to make it through this. We're going to make it through this. We're going to make it through this. Anybody can give voice to what's already happened. Kingdom people give voice to what God is going to make happen. God can't do it until we say it. So we have to say it. We have to say it. Over our family, over our finance, over our health, over the uncertainty that would be in our future. You may say, oh, pastor, I've lost my job. I'm, I'm so sorry that if that's happened in the season. But I just want to say to you, God's got a job for you. God has provision for you. And God's going to help you. Everything's going to be all right. Well, Pastor, how's God going to do it? I I don't know how God's going to do it. He's sneaky about those things. I just know he's going to do it. He is faithful to his promise. 
He's faithful to perform what he has promised. That's what Abraham judged God faithful. Being persuaded that what he had promised he was able to perform. God's promise to us is true. That he's a very present help in time of trouble. When life throws its worst at us, heaven releases its best for us. When the enemy does the very worst thing he can do to you, heaven will do the very best thing that God can do for you. That's how God works all things together for good. It's a cognitive dissonance. It's a contradiction. That in the day of calamity, the day of difficulty, God says, trust me, I'm going to make this good. I'm going to find a way. I'm going to find a way. Yeah, he's going to find a way. Our God's faithful. Our God's loving. Our God's caring. And our God's not intimidated by the events that are happening on a worldwide scale. But I'm here to tell you in Jesus' name, God dropped a word in my heart. He said, tell my people, everything is going to be all right. That this season, we're praying for the shortening of the season. In fact, we're calling our church to a fast. CFD and family, if you could fast one day a week in these next weeks. See if you're able to do that and really push into God, not just for your own breakthroughs, but for the breakthrough of medicine and science to solve and cure this disease. For the breakthrough of the kingdom, for million, millions of people to come to Christ. For the breakthrough of God's will to be done in the face of this very moment in the battles that, that people are facing. God, God's will will be done. There's a great story in the book of Acts, and I'll just summarize it for you. And Paul was on his way to Rome. And when they started out, everything was great. The weather was perfect, but they hit a hurricane. And the hurricane was so intense that Dr. Luke describes it in the book of Acts that there was no difference between day and night. It was just pure night, dark for days and days and weeks on end. And they, the sailors of the boat panicked and they threw all the cargo overboard and they were about ready to throw the prisoners. It was a prisoner boat. And Paul stopped them and said, got everyone in the boat around them. They were all freaking out and hopeless and hurting, despondent, discouraged, depressed. And he said, I have heard from God. He said, take heart, men. I believe God that it will be just as it was told me. An angel came to Paul and said this, you're going to make it through this journey because I'm with you. And Paul asked for the souls of every person on board that ship. Not one person's life was lost. The ship was lost for a season. And God's kept his promise. They landed shipwrecked in Malta. And God did amazing things there. But Paul said this, I believe God. Before the storm was over, God needed someone to believe it would be over. Before things turned around, God needed one person. One person out of almost 300 believed God, and God turned it around for all 300. God doesn't need everybody to believe him. He just needs somebody to believe him. God doesn't need everybody to have a breakthrough, but he needs somebody you be that somebody. You be the person believing God for your family, your business, your finance, your health. For America, for Phoenix, for Arizona, wherever you're at. Believing and standing for the breakthrough that you know God has for you. You be the person that keeps saying everything's going to be all right. Even before it's all right. Even before it's fixed. Even before your business is back or your job is secured. Or before things have settled down in the culture. You be the person filled with hope and faith and persevering, trust in God that says, I know one thing, everything is going to be all right. That's God's promise to us. Say things like this and make these kinds of declarations a part of your confession. God's got this. The best is yet to come. It's time for my comeback. All things work together for my good. Hey, breakthrough's on the way. When do we say that? Before it's come. Everything's going to be all right. My family will be saved. My children will serve the Lord. My business will bounce back. My health is being restored. 
In Jesus' name, I am healed. No weapon formed against me will prosper. I am blessed with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places. God is for me, not against me. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Greater is he who is in me than he that's in the world. I am a greatly loved child of God. I am redeemed and chosen, accepted, anointed, and highly favored. I will live and not die. With long life, God will satisfy me. Psalm 91. God has not given me a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind. What the enemy meant for evil, God will turn it for my good. That's how we build a bridge to our miracle. That's how we survive the evil day. That's how we overcome bad reports and bad news. That's how we build a bridge of hope that gets us from where we are to where God wants us to be, where we want to be. That happens by us trust, trusting God. The Shumanite woman said, you know what? Everything's going to be all right. She believed that. She believed that her story wasn't over. She believed that her son's life wasn't over. She believed that what God had given her, she had authority to take back from the enemy trying to steal it. She believed that her trust in God would be rewarded. And she got what she believed. So often in the ministry of Christ, there was this great interaction between Jesus and a person. And often he would say right back to the person, your faith did this. Your faith saved you, made you well. Your faith healed you. Your faith healed your servant. Your faith healed your daughter. What is faith? Well, faith is trusting and believing God and then declaring his promises over our life, even in, in the midst of troubling circumstances. Faith is when you say, while you're still battling infirmity, by his stripes I'm healed. Faith is when you say, when you feel depleted and weak, I am strong in the Lord. Faith is when you say, when you don't know what's going to happen exactly and how it's going to happen, you, you, you boldly say, everything's going to be all right. Oh, may we fill the earth with hope, with faith, with the confession of God's promise that everything is going to be all right. <clears throat> I want to teach you a little song or sing a little song that I wrote last night. That I felt like the Holy Spirit gave me. It's a song of healing. Maybe Worship Nation could come out too. <clears throat> Thank you, Jesus. Jesus healed my heart when it was broken I know he can heal anything that's broken in you Jesus has compassion on those who are hurting I know he can heal anything hurting in you There is healing for you in Jesus. No matter where you're hurting, He can heal anything. There is healing for you in my Jesus. He can heal anything. He can heal anything. Jesus healed my heart when it was broken. I know that he can heal anything broken 
in you. Jesus has compassion on those who are hurting. He can heal anything that's hurting in you. There is healing for you in Jesus. No matter where you're hurt, He's more than enough. There is healing for you in my Jesus. He can heal anything. He can heal anything. There is healing for you in Jesus. No matter what is hurting in you, there is healing for you in my Jesus. He can heal anything. He can heal anything. There is healing for you in Jesus. No matter where you're hurting, He can heal anything. There is healing for you in my Jesus. He can heal anything. He can heal anything. There is healing for you in Jesus. No matter where you're hurting, He can heal anything. There is healing for you in Jesus. He can heal anything. He can heal anything. There is healing for you. No matter where you're hurting, He can heal anything. There is healing for you in Jesus. He can heal anything. He can heal anything. There is healing for you in Jesus. No matter where you're hurting, He can heal anything there is healing for you in Jesus he can't heal anything he can't heal anything broken I know he can heal anything it's broken in you today I know that's true no matter what you're going through no matter where you're hurting Jesus Christ is your healer and I just declare that healing grace that healing love that healing anointing that healing promise over your life it doesn't matter where we hurt. There's no distinction. There's no barrier in God. He, he heals us, our heart, our mind, our body, our lives, our family, our world, our business. Whatever is hurting, there's healing for you in Jesus. Today, receive that grace. Open your heart. Receive his love. Open your heart. Receive his promise. I have a word from God for you. Everything's going to be all right. God is for you and he's helping you. Thank you, Jesus.